Hi, this is Gautam. For today's episode, we'll be looking at a magnum office, The Glass Palace, written by Amitav Ghosh. Now, if you're interested in books written by Amitav Ghosh, do look at the description for the playlist. Amitav Ghosh writes a novel which spans both space and time. The story starts with the introduction of a Bengali boy, Raj Kumar. He's 11 year old and he's serving in a food stall in Myanmar. Now, during one important event, not just his life, but the entire fate of Myanmar's changes, it is the invasion of the British Empire into the Burmese Kingdom. Now, after the defeat of the Burmese King, his entire family, with few of his servants, are deposed and transported from Burma to Ratnagiri in India. Ratnagiri is a town located between Goa and Mumbai. Now, Rajkumar is in love with one of the Queen's servants, Dolly, and it is this love which takes him from Burma to Ratnagiri. We see another pivotal character named Uma. Now, Uma is the wife of an IAS officer who is responsible for taking care of the needs of the Burmese king in Ratnagiri. We see the story traveling from Burma to the provinces of Bombay, to Madras, to Bengal, and also to the Malay Peninsula. And the timeline starts from 1885, the founding year of the Indian National Congress, till the last decade of the 21st century. Now, if you take the uh, you know theme, we definitely see several of the real real personalities uh, being referred to. We have references to Mahatma Gandhi, to Subhash Chandra Bose, to B. R. Ambedkar, Jawaharlal Nehru, and all of them are in the background. And uh, we see how the changes from the foundation of the Indian National Congress to the First World War, then the sec- Great Depression, then the Second World War, then the instance of a post-independent India. All of these events uh, affect each and every individual present in the entire Southeast and Southeast Asian region. And we we see what these changes are through the letters of the author as he explores these possible changes through the characters he has created. Now, to discuss the major themes, I want you to understand that there will be mild spoilers. Of course, I'm not going to reveal what happens to the major characters, but without creating, uh, you know, creating a statement on where they are in space and time, it is difficult to analyze the plot points. So these are mild spoilers. They wouldn't spoil the entire in, in, entire picture. So the first theme which is explored by Amitav Ghosh is patriotism. He does this through a character Arjun. Arjun is Uma's nephew. He is part of the British Army. British Army, he's selected as an officer. Now, during the Second World War, we see a moral dilemma in Arjun when he goes and battles against the Japanese in the Malay Peninsula, that is in the Eastern Front in Malay Peninsula and in Burma. So the question of who exactly Arjun is, is Arjun uh, by, you know, is, is Arjun being loyal to the British Army or uh, should Arjun fight against the British army because India itself is trying to aspire for independence and the Britishers are not ready to provide independence. So should he fight for the British or should he fight against the British? Second is a question of on whichever side you take the fight, at the end of the day, isn't an army man a mercenary? Isn't a soldier at the end of the day trying to make uh, ends meet and he's participating in one way or the other? So that is properly explored through this character. Second is a theme of possibilism and colonialism. So this is explored through the character of Rajkumar, where we see this aspiring 11-year-old boy transform himself into a giant in timber business. And uh, the sequence where the uh, the author tries to illuminate our eyes uh, by explaining the forest is tremendous. It's actually breathtaking, you know, to say the least. And uh, we see that nature itself is used as a source for exploiting nature. We see big tuskers and giant elephants dragging the dragging the timber and the velocity of the rivers themselves, the Iravadi River and Salvin being uh, used as a method of transport. And uh, the entire region of uh, forest regions of Myanmar totally brought under man's control. And the beauty is uh, we get a, a small quip quip in this novel where people discuss before the launch of the British invasion into Myanmar, will any country try to invade another country just for wood? Well, in fact, they do. And that is what the British did in several parts of the world. Third is a question of migration and identity. Now, in these 60 to 70 years from 1885 to independence, both Burma and Malaysia were important sources for timber and rubber plantations, uh, rubber plantations respectively. So to work in these plantations, naturally Indians are forcibly migrated to these plantations and uh, many voluntarily come because there is uh, because of extreme poverty. Now, when these plantation workers are uprooted, they struggle with the concept of identity. 
not just that they lose their own homeland, but in their destination, there is this concept of inter-ethnic conflicts where they don't have a homeland. At the same time in their destination, they are not accepted as one among them, even though they spend more than two generations in these new land areas. And if you look at the source of all these points, the migration is a result of aspiration for profit maximization and colonialism in general. So this theme of us versus them is properly explored in this novel and the author tries to give a background on the conflict between a conflict faced by Indians in Myanmar as they are seen as exploiters and agents of the British. And finally the fragility of the political and economic systems which humans have created. Now you take the present situation, situation today even though we say that it is a globalized world and all the systems were functioning clearly well. We all it took was a single virus and uh, e when we were recovering, recovering from the virus, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine to disrupt uh, food chain systems, uh, food supply systems and supply chain systems uh, across the globe. So the, there is always a chance that when a war arises, the systems completely break down and the amount of lives lost and the displacement cost can never be uh, properly captured. Uh, through any artistic form or real data because it really doesn't convey the pain which an individual experiences. Of all the positives, it does not mean that I do not have uh, you know, any negatives associated with the novel. But the point is, it's the same thing with the uh, earlier review of Ibis Trilogy that one way or the other, uh, the, you know, the major plot point character seems connected. And even at certain instances where they are not supposed to meet, they do get an opportunity to meet. So, but we can definitely say that that is a liberty which the author can take. So, apart from that, uh, this is a wonderful novel to read and I strongly recommend that you do. And uh, that's it for the end of today's review. Meet you in the next episode pretty soon. Bye for now.